Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Cultivate and Keep. It's uh, your pals, Corey and Jeremy. Yo, yo. What's up, Corey? Nothing much, man. A little, a little toasted, a little, uh, little, little burnt. Pork but, K. Uh, uh, fishing, early morning fishing. Uh, After a late night with you, actually. Yep. Um, we went deep sea fishing around Point Loma, my first experience. I was the only one that didn't, that didn't catch anything. Mm-hmm. Um, all the seals bit got my bait. And I I caught a lot of seals to be fair, yeah, but I think I probably caught the most seals out of everyone that day. How many fish uh, did the boat catch? Do you know? I don't know, but everyone that I was with each caught two, so mm-hmm. the five of us caught ten collectively, but I contributed zero. Collectively, collectively, <laughs> interesting. Um, you know they call me the bass slayer. The bass slayer, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The bass layer. I'm not joking, dude. It's for real. Yeah. Well, who's or my uh, Max? Your dad? <laughs> my, my dad and uh, my mom. Like, w- my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and, like one friend. One friend. <laughs> who's? It's not me. I that's just for sure. realized how stupid. <laughs> I sound. They call me the bass layer. Okay, so my mom, my dad, it's my from uh, my time on the Umpqua River in Oregon. Oh. And uh, yeah, we just go small mouth, small bout. <laughs> Smallmouth bass fishing. Nice. And uh, yeah, that's where I earned my stripes as the bass slayer. That's cool. What's the most fish you've ever caught in one like 237 time? fish. Oh my gosh. No one believes me ever. I think I've probably caught like two fish in my whole career. So we, uh, <laughs> well, so the river is, it's like a stocked river. I mean, if like I go fishing here in San Diego and I catch like five fish for like yeah. five hours. So right. it's, you don't catch anything. But this river is, uh, it's like a stocked uh, private river so like not anyone not anyone can go only if you, if you have a fishing guide and mm. like basically pay to go through a company so it's rigged basically um, that's what you're saying no, what, what i'm saying is it's a private river and it's stocked quarry that's what i'm saying so it's easy okay. i mean <laughs> anyone can go there and slay right so <laughs> put me in coach i set a record for the single most like one person ever okay. so All right. i think bef- the next closest person was like uh, i forget how far below but probably 20 or 30 fish it was like intense dude okay so what's your secret like what's your technique whoopa oh whoopa okay whoopa <laughs> whoopa that's so funny to me if you've seen the episode of friends you know yeah with joey and chandler whoops no it's whoopa i know that's the joke i want to play it out with you anyway <laughs> thank you um so yeah picture that like a whip like okay. so the range like coming up right so like when the fish is like, coming out of the water uh i would like fling it up out of the water in one motion right yep. it flies off the hook and then in one motion i go back down towards the water kind of like i'm whipping the water yeah okay flippity flop flop you know flinky flinky <laughs> anyway uh it only works for, like smaller fish but uh, at one point i'm pretty sure there was a stretch where i caught like eight fish in, a, in like a minute that's crazy my dad was like filming me I, it was I, just, it was nuts. I still don't understand this. So that's when, as soon as the the fish bites, that's when you flip up. Wow, you and then are you fling a noob, down. Huh? Or what? You're you, a fish. You can just noob. see the fish, and then you just pull so, up. Okay, and then, I want to be very clear. This is not okay. like uh, a. This is not like a fishing technique. I don't think. <laughs> that's what I don't like. And B. This is. It not, sounds equal to a th- like the fishing technique of shooting. This fish. isn't like a normal like Jeremy technique. This okay. was like a oh bizarre day where i was catching a buttload of fish and so yeah. i just anyway uh yeah you I mean we were in like a shallow hole so i could like see most of the fish i think it's probably like 15 feet deep and we're, in uh. a, we're in a boat over like over the, over so uh i mean i would catch a fish and like reel until it got to the surface of the water once it was like two feet from the surface that's when i would get a little flippity flop flop you know oh i see so what's so the you catch it of- reeled up just oh. to make it fast because if not i'm taking the fish out i'm having to reach to grab the fish take it off the hook and so the Honestly, how it happened was I think I did it on accident. Like <laughs> I was really excited one time, and I re- re- reeled really fast on a super small fish, and it just like flung out of the water. <laughs> and so I just like kind of went with it, and like it flew off, and I went back into the water, and I was like, "Oh, that was really cool." And so I like <laughs> kind of perfected it, and then I, uh, you know. So it's fling out of the water and then fling onto the boat. So it's flip it out of the water oh. and flop it b- back down into the water. So okay, I see. you're flipping the fish up. And that motion makes the fish fly off the hook, basically. And okay. then you're flopping it back towards the water. Not the fish, the hook. And so that way your bait just goes right back into the water. I see. You can't waste any time, brother. Okay, that's right. That's how you do eight in one minute. 
Yes, sir. And 237 in five hours. I th- no one probably believes me, but I promise you that is all <laughs> true. Wow. Um, well, I would like to see that technique one day. Okay. Maybe you can teach me only the flippity only flop. Only on the umqua, baby. Only in Oregon. Only in the umqua. Okay. So. Yeah. I I feel like I've realized that San Diego is not like the prime fishing spot, maybe. I think you're you're incorrect, but that's okay. Really? I mean, I wouldn't Where are the prime fishing spots? Brother. Brother. <laughs> Kind of like a, like, hold on, Max is chewing on the cord. Hey, Max, that's Kinda my cord, bro. Uh, hey. All right. Sorry, guys. Excuse Max. Kind of like a, a good magician never gives away his secrets. Yeah. A good fisherman. Yeah, that's what I feel never, like. It's very, like, closed. Never, never gives up the honey hole. The honey hole is always secret. It's a tight-knit community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why, like, people have, like, their, s- it's kind of like, you know, like, surfers, too. Like, everyone, like, has, it's like an unspoken thing. Like, everyone has their spot on yep. the wave. And, um. And you don't you don't mess with it, Max. Are you like <laughs> trying to play Twister with us, bro, or what? Because yeah, that's funny. Hey, get out of here, dude. All right, well, he'll okay. Figure it out. Well, let's get into it. Yeah. What do you got for us today? Um. Well, I've been reading through uh, Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus, um, and like midway through Exodus and like more in Leviticus, it kind of really stuck out to me. But just the whole idea of um. Of like uh, sacrifice, and I think, um, hmm. like I think of when we when we think about like giving a sacrifice or offering up a sacrifice to God, uh, like my mind goes towards like just bigger, like bigger stuff, you know. Um, dang, Max, that looks painful. Uh, I think of like a big, like a bigger idea of a sacrifice. So giving something up, right, or yeah. you know, like foregoing an opportunity for God, or I don't know, like just like a bigger. Um, doing like a sacrifice in a bigger way and then you think about uh like in genesis i think it is uh with um uh with jacob when he's going to sacrifice his son isaac right where he they go on that big long hike up the mountain and then he gets to the point where he's about to sacrifice his own son and ends up not doing it because god was testing him but i'm all to say my mind typically goes towards like a bigger sacrifice and in in, uh, exodus uh and leviticus it talks a lot about like the day-to-day um like cleansing and day to day of like uh, basically finding ways like where they're impure and, and sacrificing to God to, to like atone for the sin that, that they committed. Mm. And I was just thinking about that. Like I, I feel for me, like if I'm inconvenienced or like if I, uh, you know, like have to sacrifice in small ways, like the church or ministry or whatever it is, like it's easy for me to like to feel inconvenience and to feel like i just want to complain like like, oh this is silly why do i have to you know i don't know get up early to go serve this saturday for this whatever i don't know stuff like that yeah and i was just thinking like dude these guys like back in the old testament like what they had to do every day like the slaughtering of the animals and like just all these like crazy like laws and rules they had to follow um to sacrifice for their sin was like crazy and i was like thinking about that like we have it so easy (laughs) and um, I don't know. So that's kind of like what I just wanted to like pick apart and talk about. I don't really have any like specific direction, but uh, I don't know. I guess like I was thinking of like for us, I think of like the common ways that like, na- and like nowadays what it looks like the sacrifice, um, to, like offer a sacrifice to God, and I think of, like the two most common like ideas would probably be like time and money. Like that's probably the two biggest ways we can sacrifice. Yeah. But I kind of wanted to talk about like what are some like out of the box ways we can sacrifice and like offer something to God. And I was thinking about it like this morning. I don't really have anything like off the top of my head, but I was curious on what you, what you could think of like out of the box ways to offer a sacrifice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That is really interesting. I feel like that's not, um, well, it's a cool way of thinking about it too, because like you mentioned, it doesn't have to always be this giant sacrifice of like, here's I'm selling everything and Mm -hmm. here's all my money or it's, I'm moving to a foreign country or I'm, foregoing this promotion or changing jobs mm-hmm. but it's the little things uh sort of to atone you know like like you said f- in the old days uh for like the, the sins and you know day-to-day things that went on but also just kind of the ritualistic or seasonal or um you know annual things that they did uh but like they're really small things like mm-hmm. um it reminds me too of um who was it i think it was job who would he would make a sacrifice i think maybe every day for all of his kids like just in case they had done something and it was like he didn't even know but he was just like i want to be so in right standing with god that um and i want my kids to be so in standing with right uh, and right with god that i'm going to do this even if i haven't done anything and it's kind of like a proactive sacrifice Mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean it's it's true i i think that a lot of these 
a lot of these things that we um, that we could view as opportunities are inconveniences. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know for me, like a lot of it is just time, um, mm-hmm. or it's even just like effort. You know, I w- the the first thing that came to mind for me was um, leading worship for my small group <laughs> because even though I love doing it and I love playing guitar and singing and be able to do that with my small group, it's an inconvenience for me to have to practice or to learn new songs or to remember to bring my guitar to group to save time at the end. Um, and it sounds a little bit silly, but, uh, I know that they, you know, really liked it and they really wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. We never did it enough Mm -hmm. because honestly, I just wasn't very good about it, but that was something that I could have viewed as this is going to be my sacrifice of, I'm going to give up some time every week to practice or to learn new songs, um, to be diligent about it. Um, and that's going to be like, you know, that time is just going to be something that I mm-hmm. choose to do. Like, this is something that I offer that I kind of go like above and beyond a little bit. Um, but I'm sure there's a lot more like, you know, minor yeah. little ways. Well, I mean, like uh, exactly what you said is exactly what, like I, like how I felt. I want like, to, that's kind of like, I guess the conviction that I felt is because like that example for you, like your way of sacrificing is fun and easy and it's music right. and it's like, <laughs> and you're, you're finding a Don't way to like, anything. Yeah, and you're finding a way to like to find that ho- to be hard, you know. Uh, and I'm not like putting you down. I'm just saying, no, like, I, if I was in your spot, I'd probably feel the same way. But that's how we are. Like, it's kind of how I, how I am too. It's kind of why I was like thinking about this. Like, it's silly. Like, it's so like our version of sacrificing today is so it, in a lot of ways is so simple compared to what was done before us. Yeah. Um, but anyway, does anything like I guess out of the box come to your head when you think about okay, like what are like in today's age, like what are things we can do to like offer up a sacrifice? Cause I think that's kind of like the heart of I want, what I want to talk mm. about is like offering up a sacrifice and where is like, what are like unique ways to do that? You know? Yeah. Well, I think um, there's a lot of like, uh, you know, a lot of the original intents for like sacrificing and for, you know, making uh, offerings and, and whatnot was just to sort of help the Israelites stand out. Like God wanted to set them apart literally from the rest of the world and say, these are my people. These are um, the people that are going to follow my ways. They're going to love me and serve me. And they're going to live according to my rules. And so the sacrifices was one of those ways to one, remind them, but also like from an external kind of viewpoint, let everyone else know that, Hey, this is how we do things. And this is what's important to us. And it's a daily reminder of where their sort of allegiance is. And I feel like there's a lot of opportunities there for us Um, and like, here are the things that, that we're going to do that one is going to edify us and bring us closer to God, but two, that's also going to be something that is sort of subtly showing the world who we are and and what our priorities are and and kind of what we care about. Uh, I feel like some of those things, um, like some easy ways, uh, would probably be like the way that we consume like media and like entertainment. Um, or just the things that we allow or disallow in our lives. You know, I mean, I, I think of all the time, like it's, there's so many good shows out or movies and, um, you know, things that other people talk, to, talk about or, or into. And it's really easy, like to want to be a part of that and to want to also join in. But also there's a sacrifice there that needs to be made of like, we're not going to be like the world and we're not going to, um, we're not going to do and talk the same as as they do Hmm. and so maybe your sacrifice is just the movies that that you watch you know we don't watch any movies in these categories or that have to do with these things or that have these contents um or that suggest these things or maybe that's not even from these like media groups um because they you know they're they're harsh towards christians or they're you know just uh maybe a more anti kind of christian company Mm -hmm. um but also maybe social media, like we're not going to be on this social media. Or we're not going to spend this much time or we're not going to say or do these things on here. Uh, we're not going to participate in this discussion. Um, we're not going to watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> that was one of the things I was thinking about because <laughs> we were talking about it and it seems like such a cool show, but it's really hard to get past the fact that um, it is uh, not edifying in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, how would you... How would you categorize that sort of thing? I haven't, I mean, for Game of Thrones specifically, I haven't seen like any of it, so I have no idea. I just know right. like what I've heard. But I think with stuff like that, I think that's super hard. I actually was thinking about that a few weeks ago. 
when I was younger, like, or actually, when we're younger, that was probably, like, one thing that you probably thought about a lot was, like, what do you watch and what do you feed your mind, whatever. And now, like, I don't really think about that. Like, right. kind of, if I want to watch it, I watch it just because of being older. And a few weeks ago, I kind of, like, thought, I think I watched, like, um, I don't know, like, a, what was it? Some kind of type of, like, horror film and uh, with a friend. And afterwards, I, I kind of had me think. I was, like, kind of weirded out, I guess. And I was, like, thinking about, like, just weird stuff because of it. And I kind of, like, stopped and I was like, wait a second. This is only because I watched that film. Like, I let it come in my mind. Yeah. I just kind of started thinking about, like, I should probably pay more attention to, like, what I allow to fill my mind with, you know. I don't think I... I think the obvious things, like, shows like Game of Thrones with, like, a lot of nudity or, like, sex and stuff like that. I think that's easy to know, like, not to fill my mind with. But other stuff, like, whether it's just, like... I don't know if it's not edifying to God or if it's not... Like, that first Paul talks about, if it's not... um what's the word like making me better or if it's not like uh what's the word contributing to like it's furthering the kingdom of god then yeah. I, I don't want anything to do with it you know and i think just that whole idea like i personally could spend more time on i think i it's easy to like just dismiss stuff that um you know if i, if I want to watch it it's easy just just to watch it right because now no one's over your shoulder saying like don't no do you can't watch this until you're 13 or yeah. 15 or whatever it is um and now it's you know you live by yourself or you're married and no one's really telling you what to do or mm-hmm. what not to do. You sort of make those decisions by yourself and uh, eventually it can get a little bit easy. One of the other things that popped in my mind was um, maybe some of like the vices that you wouldn't, uh, that you wouldn't want to do. Like I think of some people who, uh, you know, were affected by alcoholism somehow in their life where someone they knew or loved uh, was an alcoholic or died of alcoholism or, um, you know, was killed by a drunk driver. And so like now, they don't have anything to do with alcohol. They don't have it. They don't participate in it. They don't encourage it. Um, even if they go out, you know, they just get water uh, and they've made kind of a promise of I'm not going to drink mm-hmm. alcohol. I think I feel like it's, it's sort of things like that where you say, even though I could, and even though um, it wouldn't really hurt, I'm choosing not to do this as a reminder of what this can do. And also a reminder of, mm-hmm. you know, the commitment I want to make to God or the place that it has in my life. Um, that was just another example to pop hmm. in my head. It's good. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have any other thoughts. Uh, do you? No, I, I mean, sacrifices are, um, you don't think about that much because it's part of the old Testament, mm-hmm. right? And sort of like the, mm-hmm. it's not a part of the new covenant where now we have Jesus, we have the Holy spirit. And now there's sort of this new, more free way of doing things. Mm hmm. Um, but I think, I think there's definitely something there about, yeah, sacrifices I think, and, um, I mean, even like using the word like offering, like I think, uh, that's like another way to think about it. I think when you hear sacrifice, it does have like, <clears throat> like a more old Testament like vibe to it. Um, I think another reason why I wanted to talk it over was because, uh, like Sunday after church, uh, Hank Tim Husky, um, our, uh, worship pastor tested, t- uh, texted the whole worship team just saying, he said, uh, good offering this morning team is what he said. Mm. And I was like thinking about that. Like, yeah, that's like what we, what we, what we do. I do like when you, when you have a gift and you serve in that way, like it, like in a ministry at the church, like it's your offering, like it's your way of like offering something up to like the body and then to God. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a cool way to think about it. Yeah. That, that is really good. I, I like that too, because, um, like a sacrifice feels like I'm going to not do this thing or abstain from this thing. But in reality, it's also I'm going to give this thing um, or I'm going to uh, take my time to do this thing for someone else. Um, so it's not just like I'm not going to do this, but it's also yeah. I'm going to choose to do this despite the yeah. pain or inconvenience, to, annoyance, etc. To me, sacrifice feels a lot more of like I have to do this. And yeah. Offering is a lot more of like I'm choosing to give right. this and to do this. Yeah, that's a really good distinction there. Um, Love it. Um, all right. Well. You know what to do. Cool, man. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, And we hope that you, uh, if if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook, Instagram. You can email us at cultivateandkeep.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, uh, ideas. If you have anything that you would like to share with us or our questions to ask, um, please reach out anytime. We would love to hear from you, okay? Otherwise, we will see you in the next one. Bye.